Hi there, Chris here, your university librarian, uh, with a short video to try and illustrate some of the concepts we've introduced in the module of MCCP 6130 dealing with predatory publishers. Now, this is an important topic uh, because the last thing we want is for our uh, researchers to be publishing in sort of journals like this. So up on the screen, I have my uh, quote unquote favorite uh, predatory publisher, uh, the good old G Journal of Education, Social Science and Humanities. And I kind of start with this one because you don't really need me to tell you that you shouldn't be submitting your work to this uh, journal. I mean, I mean, the website is just a joke, kind of. Uh, they kind of throw up an ISSN, which is not worth anything because anyone can apply for an ISSN. You can see there's like broken images and things. Uh, there's a random Mother Teresa quote for some reason. So, you know, this is not something that I think would uh, fool anyone with some common sense. But they do have a, a sister journal called the G Journal of Environmental Science and Technology, which I have... Uh, up here as well. Let me just go to their homepage, which is a little bit more uh, convincing because this journal is uh, built on the open journal system, uh, OJS, uh, you can see here. And, and this is a legitimate open source journal publishing platform. In, indeed, uh, HKBU Library does host a couple of journals on this platform. But again, it is open source, which means it's available to anyone. Uh, for free. So if we start kind of poking about uh, on their website uh, under about the journal, it's not particularly well written, but they say all the right things. You know, they, their commitment to open access, their commitment to digital archiving, privacy statement, uh, etc. So it's not immediately clear that this journal has problems. But if you start digging in, so one thing we said in the module is unusually low publication charges, article processing charges, are indicative perhaps uh, of a predatory journal. And it's really buried deep in the instructions uh, for authors, but there it is, uh, the processing charge, uh, 2,250 Indian rupees, or 150 US dollars, which compared to legitimate gold and hybrid uh, open access publishers, which will charge you know, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 uh, US dollars. This is uh, suspiciously low, let's say. But of course, uh, you know, these cannot be taken in isolation and just by itself, a low processing charge is not necessarily um, confirmation that a journal is predatory. We need to look at other things too. Big red flag for me, uh, are these uh, this list of where it's indexed right all most of these are not legitimate these are either fake or misleading like Google Scholar if your uh, website or if your platform looks like a journal a uh, Google Scholar will index it there's no quality control that goes on uh, with Google Scholar this one's pretty egregious this one the scope database is trying to pretend I think to be Scopus uh, which is a big, well-known database, S-C-O-P-U-S, uh, Scopus. Uh, and this one, I think, has become defunct because the uh, link appears to be broken. So that is a bigger red flag for me. Interestingly, there is a legitimate one here, the DOAJ, the Directory of Open Access Journals. This is a, let's say, semi-legitimate source, and it does seem to be listed in the DOAJ. So this is actually a good example about you can't just take one source. Oh, if it's in the DOAJ, it's definitely okay. You, you can't really uh, do that. You have to look at all of these uh, things uh, holistically. Uh, and let's actually look at some of the content, or we'll try and go into their archives. Now, the first thing that jumped out at me with their latest issue, the December 2022 issue, is that there are only two articles in the entire issue and both of those articles were written by the same person uh, which doesn't exactly fill me with confidence and if you go back through their archives you'll see most issues only have two uh, or three or four uh, articles which indicates they're not getting a lot of uh, manuscripts being submitted to them if I actually open uh, this one here I have it open here First thing on this, it actually looks okay. You know, the formatting of the PDF, this looks like a legitimate journal article. And I don't know anything about inorganic fertilizers, so I can't really critique uh, the article itself. But just in the first few lines, uh, you sort of see uh, some problems with the language. Actually, the one that jumped out at me uh, here, 
uh, something, 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 claims to adhere to the second lion of argument. I think they meant line, L-I-N-E, not lion, as in the, you know, the, the big cat. So if you're seeing these sorts of very obvious typographical errors in uh, the language being used, that's indicative, you know, did they really peer review it if they didn't pick up on like very obvious uh, problems with the language like that? Now, again, this is all very challenging because, you know, especially with generative AI, you, you, know, you, you can probably produce perfect English using AI tools. So I guess my main message is not no single one of these signs, bad language, uh, or not bad language, but poorly used English, or uh, claiming to be indexed in, in fake sources or low article processing charge. Uh, none of them can be used as a single uh, definitive um, uh, proof that something is a predatory publisher. So which is why we say in the module, if you're not sure, come and ask us. Now the last the thing I wanted to finish on uh, was just more of a comment on you know why predatory why we should care about predatory publishers and the problems that they're causing uh, because uh, they are actually polluting the scholarly record so if for example I search for the name of that journal that we just looked at in Google Scholar uh, you will see that it is being indexed and quote unquote cited uh, by Google Scholar so, and again, if you just go straight, if you search Google Scholar, you, you find uh, something, you know, an interesting article and you just click on it and you're taken straight to the PDF, you might think that that's a legitimate article. But for us, having gone through the website, you know, I have a lot of question marks about this particular journal. So it is a real uh, problem. So be aware of it. Uh, you know, be sure that when you submit your manuscript to a journal that you're uh, convinced of its bona fides. And again, if you're not sure, come and ask at the library, ask me, ask any one of my colleagues, and we'll give you our verdict on whether or not you should submit your work there. So I hope that's been helpful, and uh, enjoy the rest of the MCCP 6130 course. Thank you.